Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. In the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the Washington Redskins. Let's talk about their quarterback situation. I was at a fantasy draft yesterday. And well after the elite quarterbacks were taken, and you know who I'm talking about, right? Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, um, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, right? Andrew Luck. Uh, well after guys like that were taken and well after Philip Rivers and several others were taken, somebody in the draft room took RG3, Robert Griffin III. Now I had the pick right after that person right and uh, I was looking at the Redskins myself I see a lot of talent all over the place right you have a very good running back Alfred Morris who's gonna take the pressure off the quarterback you also have Pierre Garçon and Deshaun Jackson uh, you have Jay Gruden as the coach so you have an offensively minded coach I'm guessing they're going to throw the ball around a lot in Washington. So after someone took RG3, I did the best I could do because I wanted the starting quarterback for the Washington Redskins by the time we get to, let's say, Game 5 or Game 6. So I took the best quarterback on the Redskins, in my opinion. I took Kirk Cousins. Now let's talk about it because in the room there was a gasp. People then, you know, alcohol was involved. People then started cheering and some were laughing and we were talking about it. But there seemed to be some feeling that, um, you know, Kirk Cousins is a controversial pick. I don't think he is. Right? I think what you have in um, Washington right now is a situation where, really, Cousins is the better quarterback. Right, but who knows who Kirk Cousins is? The fans know the Heisman Trophy winner, RG3. Right, the fans remember that RG3 led them to the playoffs his rookie year. Right, RG3 is a compelling story. The fans remember that RG3 hurt his knee and tried to gallantly go on with a bad knee and the fans of course blame his lack of effectiveness on his knee right um, you know I'm a gambler I just want to know about the level of effectiveness today right maybe he had a great history maybe he had a great college career all of that's fine and dandy but who's the best quarterback today for the Washington Redskins? Folks, I believe Jay Gruden's figuring it out now. It's the quarterback who started the last few games of last year. Kirk Cousins. Right? Let's talk about RG3 for a second. Now, I saw RG3 in a preseason game that scared me. Now, people here online know that I have made videos where I've praised Johnny Manziel. I'm a huge fan of Russell Wilson's. I'm not one of these people who's categorically opposed to the idea of a mobile quarterback. Right? Fran Tarkington's one of my favorite quarterbacks ever. Right? Steve Young led the San Francisco 49ers to a Super Bowl. Right? If you can move a little bit in the pocket, I don't, you know, I don't have any problems with uh, that. Right? As long as you're able to win games. I personally feel the best quarterback in the National Football League is Aaron Rodgers. In part because he can move in a way that Peyton Manning and Tom Brady can't. Right? Having an ability to move in the pocket, to me, is a bonus. But you have to know how to slide. You have to. Some guys never learn. Let me just point out, I used to play a little baseball. 
just street ball, right? I'm not here trying to look like I was, you know, big time little league or anything like that. And I never learned how to slide. Right? I'd be running into a base and I'd try to slide, then I'd be all tangled up and stuff like that, a lot of stress on my knees and stuff like that. The guys who know how to slide, the guys who can slide like Lou Brock back in the day, it just comes naturally to these guys, right? They they have the timing. It's a skill. You have to figure out your gait. You have to figure out your feet, right? You have to have it timed where you know when to slide and stuff like that. That takes years to learn. You're not going to learn that right away. Now, Russell Wilson knows how to slide. Johnny Manziel knows how to slide. They know how to get down, right? They know how to do it without getting hit hard, right? I would argue, by contrast, Michael Vick never really figured out how to slide, right? I don't think Vic knows how to slide today. That's why Vic keeps getting knocked out of games, right? Nor do I believe um, RG3 knows how to slide. That's a big problem for a guy with knee issues. I was watching him, I think it was against Cleveland in the preseason or some team like that, and the dude was getting hit hard. The guy didn't know how to slide. Right? To me, I've watched enough football where I've seen guys who don't know how to slide, who are mobile quarterbacks running around outside of the pocket. I've, I've seen enough to know this guy's another injury waiting to happen. That's the first thing. The second thing is what I perceive to be, and let's be blunt here, right? This is the rough neighborhood part of the Internet. I consider it to be an ego problem, right? The guy was playing in a playoff game. He hurt his knee. It was obvious that he wasn't the same player after he hurt his knee. Now, there are many who would have taken themselves out of a game, right? Many. Jay Cutler comes to mind, right? Jay Cutler did take himself out of a playoff game where he got injured. RG3, even when he couldn't move, kept himself in the game. Right? Now, RG3 has had ACL problems. But you're never going to ever hear him say, yeah, you know, my knee was bothering me. You know, yeah, this ACL problem is on my mind. Rather, you have the opposite, don't you? The preseason game I was watching where he couldn't slide and was getting hit, right? I noticed he wasn't wearing a knee brace. Give me a break. Okay, it's ridiculous. Even Sam Bradford, when he re-injured his ACL the other day, had a knee brace on, right? I get the feeling that RG3 is just taking risks that put his team at risk, right? He's had multiple knee problems, multiple. Now, even if he believes his knee's 100%, I believe there are those, including many of you watching this video, who would say to themselves, look, I have had knee problems in the past. My team can't risk me getting injured again that would be a setback to the team so even though I feel a little bit better without the knee brace I'm gonna face reality here and know that I've had a knee history and I'll wear a knee brace at least this year at least so soon after his prior problems right I didn't see the Redskins in the playoffs last year I didn't even see the Redskins with a 500 record last year. It's not like the guy dominated last year. So we get to this year, and of course, there's this fiction that is still being promoted that RG3 is 100% healthy and he has no knee problems. Look, I'm a gambler. I don't want to deal with fiction. I don't want to deal with ego. I don't want to be down some road where I'm supposed to believe that some guy who's getting hit hard, who 
you know, stayed in a game after tearing his knee again and all this other stuff, is 100% and has no concerns. I just want to win the bet. Right? Let's go one step further. You know, RG3 had great numbers in college at Baylor. Great numbers. Right? I was a big Andrew Luck fan when he was in college, but even I concede RG3 winning the Heisman, I can't complain about that. Right? He certainly earned strong consideration for the Heisman. Right? He was certainly on the very short list of people to win the Heisman. No question about it. But understand, since Andrew Luck left Stanford, Stanford hasn't had a quarterback remotely on par with Andrew Luck. Not remotely on par. That's what happens when great players leave programs. Right? There's a drop-off. It's hard to replace a Dan Marino at Pittsburgh. Right? You understand the drop-off. Good luck replacing Drew Brees at Purdue the next year. When RG3 left Baylor, that team kept humming. Right? That team kept it going. Now, unless this is that rare case where a Steve Young replaces a Joe Montana or a Mickey Mantle replaces a Joe DiMaggio, you do have to ask yourself, was it the quarterback or was it the system? Right? The guy who replaced RG3, is he on your short list of Heisman Trophy candidates? Right? So to me, I do have questions. Then I looked at RG3's first year in the uh, NFL. He had a great quarterback rating. But when you looked at what he was doing in the pros... Was it the same thing that you saw Andrew Luck doing? Right? I saw Andrew Luck throwing the ball downfield. Now, it's interesting because understand, Andrew Luck's a better runner than you realize. Right? Andrew Luck, when he needs to run, can actually run. Andrew Luck is a bit of an athlete at the position. But yet, you don't think of him as an athlete. Nor do you think of Aaron Rodgers as an athlete. Right? We think of these guys as quarterbacks. Right? Even though both guys can tuck the ball and run when they have to, we understand that the rest of their game, hitting third and fourth receivers, right? finding Reggie Wayne or T.Y. Hilton or Jordy Nelson downfield, that's what these guys do. In my opinion, I'm just speaking for myself. I'm not a scout. I'm just a hack trying to make money on these games. RG3 isn't the passer those guys are. RG3 was throwing a lot of short screen passes. He wasn't throwing at the volume or the distance, in my opinion, that Andrew Luck was. That Kirk Cousins does. He's not that quarterback. So, I'm not trying to stir the pot here. I'm just trying to give fantasy advice. When you see a guy who runs as much as RG3, who can't slide, who's had knee problems, who's missed games in the past, who didn't play in the preseason just last year, and who one year later is not wearing a knee brace, who also plays in the NFC East, a division known to rush the quarterback, right? A division where, in cold weather, defenses are going to come up on the line of scrimmage and dare the quarterback, right? To me, if you're in a fantasy pool, you need to look long and hard at Kirk Cousins. Right? I would say it's probably 60-40, in my opinion, that he's a starting quarterback by, let's say, week six. Right? Whether that's because RG3, who has not lit the world on fire this preseason, gets injured, which is a distinct possibility, or whether it's because the team needs a spark 
after a lackluster start with RG3, right? A restless fan base. Understand, we know how things are back east. We know that the fans love you in the preseason. If you don't get the job done in the month of September, you're going to be in trouble in October. You think those Washington Post writers are going to be all friendly with you after a 1-3 and or 0-4 and start? Right? So, all I could say is this. Be a skeptic on RG3. His rookie year was the year before last year. It wasn't last year. Right? His preseason was subpar. Right? And that's ongoing. You want to look at that fourth game and you want to keep a close eye on that situation. Right? Just understand that RG3 has one of the better backups in the league in Kirk Cousins. Understand, Mike Shanahan believed that Kirk Cousins was the guy who should start the last three games of last year. Forget the nonsensical PR stated reason, the idea of protecting RG3. Have you ever heard of that before in your life as a football fan? When's the last time you heard Bill Belichick say, you know what, we're going to start Ryan Mallett for three games because we need to protect Tom Brady. Right? Think about it. Drew Brees is not the biggest man in the world. He's not. Right? We've never heard Sean Payton say, hey, you know what, I need to protect Drew Brees for these three games. It doesn't happen. Right? It doesn't happen. Let me just tell you, last year, Aaron Rodgers broke a collarbone. He was knocked out. He missed several games. You know what? When he was healthy, he was back in the lineup. There was no, hey, let's protect Aaron Rodgers. Right? We beat the Cowboys without him. We'll just, we'll just protect Aaron Rodgers. No. Right? Mike Shanahan made a move at the end of last year. Right, He was on the outs with Daniel Snyder, who, of course, has an interest in selling tickets and who understands RG3 is a popular figure, for now at least. Right, So Shanahan, of course, went with Kirk Cousins. Aren't you surprised that even post-Shanahan, Redskin legends like Joe Theismann, right, Super Bowl winning quarterback, Joe Theismann is openly saying that he believes Kirk Cousins should start. Shouldn't that raise your eyebrows? At one point, Kirk Cousins wanted to be traded. The team didn't trade him. Think about it. Somebody in that building said, no, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Even though no, no one knows Kirk Cousins like they know RG3 outside of Kirk Cousins' family and scouts. We're not letting this guy leave the building, right? Given all the offensive firepower on the Washington Redskins, if you're in a fantasy draft and it's late, I'm not saying in the first round, you know, busting out with the, hey, I'm taking Kirk Cousins. I'm not saying that. But if it's late and you're at the stage where you're looking for backup and third-string quarterbacks and you're looking for sleepers, do yourself a favor. Look at the number of yards Kirk Cousins pass for per start. Just look at films of Kirk Cousins in the pocket, hitting everyone in the building who's wide receiver eligible, wearing a redskin uniform. Right? Just look at this man's accuracy and how deep he throws the ball accurately. Right? And just realize. That if RG3 gets hurt outside the pocket, won't be the first time. Right? Or, if the team wants a change, and keep in mind, right, you don't pick up Deshaun Jackson and then decide not to have the infrastructure to get him the football. Right? If they're impatient in D.C., and Lord knows it wouldn't be the first time, and they're looking for a spark. Understand, this might be the guy to do it. You might want to consider picking Kirk Cousins as a project late in your fantasy draft. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online if there are other quarterbacks that we should know about. 
guys a little below radar who you think might have a chance, right? The third string guy. I know the folklore. The third string guy on the Cleveland Browns, right? Garoppolo on the New England Patriots, right? He looks promising, especially in keeper leagues, right? Blake Bortles. Let's let's stop kidding ourselves that Chad Henney is going to be the starter for the entire year in Jacksonville, right? If there are guys like that who you want to raise here online, please do so in the comment section and help all of us try to get a leg up on the other guys in our fantasy draft. Thanks for stopping by.